Hey gang, this is Terry with Toxic Natos. Hey, I wanted to go over a, a watch I have in for repair. I used to own this watch a few years ago. Um, I'm a watch flipper, so no watch stays with me long. And um, this was a super impressive watch when I owned it. So this is the Seiko SBDC 007. This is the first iteration of this model. There is a newer version that has the X on the dial. Um, still a good looking watch but there were some issues with this watch I did not like and I think a lot of guys or, or owners will or previous owners will agree with me on this so number one the specs on this watch so the specs say that this watch is is 51 millimeters lug to lug and 44 millimeters wide um, personally that sounds horribly I don't think I could pull it off if I only went off the specs, but we all know that specs lie. That's part of my video series I do is, is to explain that specs uh, don't mean everything. So this watch also came with a 6R15, which is number two, my, my second issue with this watch. Not that the 6R15 is necessarily bad, but it can be. Sometimes this movement just does not want to hold time or does not want to be regulated and you can't get parts for this movement so that's the second part of my issue with the 6R15 and if you can't get parts for it that makes it even harder um, third thing I don't have a problem with the Hardlex crystal but a lot of watch guys complain uh, that the Hardlex crystal is inferior compared to Sapphire I do not agree with that but um, that is a complaint you hear a lot, especially in this price range of watch. I think this watch was about $650, 700 new. Um, number four is the dia shield coating on the case. So the watch is titanium, but it does have a dia shield coating on it, and it gives it almost like a, a smoked silver look. Um, in my experience, if the dia shield gets uh, torn up enough it actually peels off almost like chrome plating so that's where the problem lies because then you have to take the watch and send it to Japan for a new case the case cannot be refinished on it as a watch flipper I don't really care about that as much because the die shield is really strong as long as I've owned one but if you owned it 20 years or so I don't know I guess we'll see that in about another 10 years whether or not die shields holding up over time Fifth thing on this watch is the bezel. And it's not really the way the bezel looks, it's the fact that they used titanium on the on the bezel ring. And the reason for me on that is because it it almost has a tin can sound to it. And that's not common on Seiko divers at all. Most of them have a nice firm uh, click to them. Now the operation on this is still great but I'm not a big fan on it, of it. Number six on this watch is the hands. So these hands originally came on the Seiko Monster and some people call them mouse pointer hands. I agree, I do not like the hands at all so I had them changed on my watch. But um, a lot of people do like them because they keep them on. Number seven on this watch the stock rubber strap. It's actually not rubber. I think it's like a polypropylene. I don't even want to call it polypropylene. Let's call it poly crap. The stock strap on this uh, that came with this watch is horrible. No two ways about it. You can put it in boiling hot water and it still sucks. Uh, at least for me. I did not enjoy it at all. So let's go to the likes of this watch. First it's lightweight. So that's where it helps when it comes to the specs because the specs say 51 millimeters, 44 millimeters wide. In actuality, it's 43.5 wide and 50 millimeters long. Doesn't seem like much difference, but with the titanium case and the curved lugs, this will be the best wearing 44 millimeter watch you'll try, uh, you'll try on in a long time. It just wears that great, which uh, 
Honestly, I would never believe it until I actually had one on my wrist, but it's a great watch. Second thing on this watch is the loom. Loom is amazing. It's standard Seiko loom, kicks butt on almost all their models. Number three is case design. That also ties into the titanium case, the brush sides, and the drilled lugs. Hard not to like that simple um, finish on it. Looks perfect. Next, the look. It's got a classic Seiko look. The only difference is that they put chrome applied markers on it and then filled it full of loom. So instead of the standard SKX007, like this, where the loom's just directly on the dial, this is actually in chrome or polished surrounds. So it gives it a little, little bit more of a mid-range, higher-end look. Uh, looks perfect. Number five on this watch is the crown operation. A lot of Seikos I see, uh, the crown is real gritty or it doesn't want to start right away or it just, a lot of them just don't feel great. On this watch, that's not true. Crown is perfect. And they actually did use a stainless steel crown on it. I don't remember if it has stainless steel tube, but I'm sure it does. Um, but it works great. So number six on this watch is the bracelet. I don't have the bracelet here. The bracelet on the Shogun is one of the best bracelets Seiko has put out on their divers in my opinion, except for the Grand Seiko divers. Um, it's kind of got like a, a middle section that's raised and it's also titanium and I'm pretty positive as die shield coating. They do scratch pretty easy. Uh, most titanium watches do, but it looks, it looks wonderful on it. Um, number seven on this. So this goes in with the 6R15 issue I was talking about. One of the good things about the 6R15 is that the replacement is the NE15, and it's cheap. It's $115. So this particular watch came in with a 6R15 issue. It was cheaper to put in a new NE15. It does have an unsigned rotor, rotor on it, so we put the Seiko rotor on it. It is a movement directly from Seiko, and we didn't have to spend man hours troubleshooting the 6R15 to figure out the issue. So if a watchmaker gets paid $100, $125 an hour, and it takes multiple hours to troubleshoot a movement and then service it, you're looking at $200, $300 to get it serviced. This movement, $115 brand new dropped in. You just cannot beat that. Uh, especially if you're you're dealing with ETAs. ETAs are about double that. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I haven't covered on this watch. I just I, I really like them. Um, but like I said, I'm a watch flipper, so I do flip watches. Oh, I got one more issue with the Shoguns that that was pretty common on the first gens. Is the dial and the chapter ring do not line up, and there's pins on the chapter ring and the dial. So if it does not come from the factory lined up, there's no way to modify that to make it uh, line up correctly. On this one, since it has a dome sapphire crystal, it kind of enhances it a little bit, but um, you really can't tell unless you look for that issue. Kind of like a mole on somebody's face. You probably won't notice it until somebody talks about it. Hey gang, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please subscribe. If you did not, please tell me to pound sand. Have a good day.